eight years ago, Land Rover launched a car that would change the brand forever. Before then, its SUVs were handsome enough, but in quite a boxy, functional sort of way. But then along came the Evoque, and suddenly it was as much about fashion and glamour as old money and off-roading. Now, I've been doing this job for more than 10 years, and during that time, I can't remember anything that has come close to the launch of the original Evoque for hype. People just couldn't believe that what was essentially a motor show concept car called the LRX was actually going to be put into production and would even be reasonably priced, at least by the standards of premium SUVs. So how do you go about replacing such a style icon? Well, the answer is by being very sympathetic to the original design. The same reason that Porsche doesn't do anything radical when it launches a new 911, and neither does Mini every time it replaces its hatchback. That said, it isn't too hard to see the influences from the bigger Range Rover Velar here, like the broader lights at the front and the rear and the pop-out door handles. But although the overall look of the new car is quite similar and it's almost exactly the same size, it's actually very different underneath. We're out in Athens for our very first experience of the new Evoque, so stay with us to find out what it's like on the road, off it, and how it stacks up for space, interior quality, tech, and running costs. But before we get started, remember that we don't just do reviews here at Watcar, we can also help you get a great discount when buying. Just head over to our website, watcar.com, or click the link up there in the top right for more details. So let's start with what it's like on the road, which, if we're honest, wasn't really a strength of the old model because by trying to make it quite sporty to drive, Land Rover actually made the steering feel a little bit nervous and the ride wasn't great either. Now, the good news is this new model is much better in every respect. The steering is slower, which might sound like a bad thing, but it actually gives you a better sense of connection with the front wheels and it makes the car feel more composed as well. Now this isn't a sports SUV like a Porsche Macan, but compared with its direct rivals, and I'm really talking about the Volvo XC40 here, it actually handles pretty tidily. There's not too much body lean through the corners and there's a reasonable amount of grip as well. The version we're driving here has massive 21 inch alloys, which come as part of a pack that also brings adaptive suspension. Now, there's no doubt the ride is smoother than it was on the old model, but it's still not perfect because can get a little bit choppy along uneven roads. It's still comfortable enough though, and we reckon if you stick with the smaller alloy wheel options, it'll get even better. Now we're driving the D240, which is a 237 brake horsepower, two liter diesel. And performance is perfectly fine, but it never feels quite as quick as you might expect something with this much power to. And although it's quite a smooth engine, if you work it quite hard as I am here, you can probably hear it gets quite noisy. The Evoque is a Land Rover, of course, so it would be rude not to try at least a bit of off-roading. Now, we haven't found anything particularly crazy out here in Athens, but I wouldn't really fancy doing this in a Volvo XC40 or an Audi Q3. Whether or not I'd actually ever need to do this is another matter, but it's nice to know that you can. The driving position, no complaints at all really. You sit nice and high up, certainly more so than you do in an Audi Q3. I've got a good view ahead of me and the seats, they're really comfy. The other thing I really like is this digital display here behind the steering wheel because as well as seeing what speed I'm doing and trip computer information, I've also got a cropped version of the sat-nav maps. Which brings us on to the main infotainment system. Now, it's pretty much exactly the same one that you get in the larger Velar. So this 10-inch touchscreen that you can adjust the angle of is nice and sharp, and you get plenty of gadgets, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. It can sometimes be a little bit sluggish to respond to commands, but overall, we reckon it's better than the system that you get in the Volvo XC40. You've also got this secondary screen below that controls the aircon, driving modes, and things like heated seats. Now, I know it wouldn't look quite as clean and minimalist, but we would prefer some more physical buttons for some of this stuff because looking down here for some icons while you're trying to drive is pretty distracting. Although you do at least get a couple of dials for adjusting the aircon. Now, no animals were harmed in the making of this particular Evoke's interior because, well, it's essentially the vegan option. Now, don't take that quite literally because there are probably glues made from animal-based products in here somewhere. But although this feels like suede on the steering wheel, it is actually a man-made material. And this covering here on the dashboard, well, I don't know what it is, but it's certainly not leather. These seats, they are trimmed with something that looks a bit like denim. 
If you're worried that all sounds a bit low rent in what's supposed to be quite a premium SUV, then I can assure you it really doesn't detract from the upmarket feeling here. Although there is, of course, a genuine leather option if you want it. As we said earlier, the new Evoque isn't really any bigger than the old model, but there is a bit more space between the front and the rear wheels, and that's helped create a bit more legroom. So this is actually now one of the roomiest cars in the class. It's a similar story with the boot. It's about 10% bigger than before, but this time, thanks to a different rear suspension arrangement. You can ignore the official capacity Land Rover measures its cars in a different way to most other manufacturers, but there's certainly enough space in here for a few suitcases or a set of golf clubs. Five other interesting things. This rear view mirror is a mirror, but if I flick this switch here, it becomes a live feed from behind the car, which is useful in low light conditions or when there's someone tall sitting in the back. The new Evoque can wade in up to 60 centimetres of water, which is 10 centimetres more than the old car and 15 centimetres more than a Volvo XC40. All of the four-wheel drive versions have mild hybrid technology as standard, so there's an electric motor that helps out and improves fuel economy in the process. A plug-in hybrid model will join the range later. The depreciation experts reckon that this badge will help the Evoque hold onto its value better than any other car in the class, so it should be a great cash buy and surprisingly affordable if you're buying on PCP Finance. Prices start at £31,600 for the 148 brake horsepower front-wheel drive diesel model with a manual gearbox, which works out to as little as £245 a month. So there's loads to like about the new Evoque, and we reckon it will stand a pretty good chance against our current class leader, the Volvo XC40, when we group test the cars back in the UK later this spring. In the meantime, head over to our website, whatcar.com, to read our full written review of the new Evoque and to find out the latest deals available on any new car. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, then give us a like and hit the subscribe button so we can let you know about our latest videos.